home and native land, Toronto's newest pulp culture podcast, covering your favorite comics, collectibles, media, nerdific origin stories, and more. Hosted by your northern neighbor, Joey Pengelinen. Here it is, nerdos and nerdettes. Comics Aloha, nerdos and nerdettes. It's Joey here with Phil. And I'm over at Planet Hobby. We're close to uh, one of my fa- my other favorite place, uh, which is Cha Time over at Burnham Thorpe. Uh, get my Asian on sometimes and uh, get some of that bubble tea goodness. How are you doing today, Phil? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Thanks for having me in the store today. You're welcome. Very good. Um, so we warmed up our vocal cords and went on about Marvel Legacy and their shenanigans right now. Um, but I'd like to tell you guys, the first time that I've ever uh, stepped into a Planet Hobby was... In square one, when you guys were in square one. How yep. long were you guys there for? We were there for 20, almost 20, a couple months short of 25 years. 25 years. So um, when I, I, I remember when I went there, um, I was really bummed out moving to Mississauga because I grew up in uh, Bathurst and King. Oh, okay. Yeah, so my, my I, first I place... Know, I know the area. Yeah, my yeah, first yeah. place was a Silver Snail once I was able to take the, the streetcar by myself was my my go-to place when it was at queen and then um you guys kind of made me be okay with mississauga because like okay there's comics here too that's cool that's fine um so but now you guys are at burnham thorpe and what's the closest intersection here mavis burnham thorpe and mavis mavis and burnham thorpe um you won't miss it um there's a big canada computers over here um but i wanted to know a little bit of how you feel like being in a standalone store rather than a big mall like that well the mall we moved out mainly because mall rents were going nuts yeah and and you know every mall is going high end and we weren't really the business model they were looking for anymore they want new expensive and american on the most part and mo- and most malls aren't looking for the diversity of yeah. having a vintage bookstore or a shop like like ours the bulk of it is high end women's accessories and cell phone booths and stuff like that. So, you guys don't carry that here anyway, right? No. <laughs> no. And uh, having an anchor, having Canada Computers as an anchor has been much better. Our anchor was was, was um, Target. Yeah. And given the history of Target, I'm not even sure who shopped there. I, uh, I don't think no. it was a single day where I saw more customers and employees in the shop. And and our rent went down dramatically. Yeah. And we're a destination store. And I, and I like it. It's allowed me to carry product lines, dump some some things that weren't working, pick others up that were. And being in a mall is a fairly restrictive environment. If you want to change things like fixtures or whatever, you actually have to get the okay of the mall managers. Um, uh, the, well, the management. Yeah. And their um, uh, creative group or whatever, they had a third party um, designer that you had to get the okay of if you wanted to even change a light fixture. Oh, jeez. And they can veto it and then if, say, if no, 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 we work, want you yeah. to get this. Yeah, yeah. if it's yeah. not within the, the branding, I guess that's... Correct. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, I remember the first time that I used to uh, go there, I remember you guys having a lot of older figures hmm. and um, a lot of hobby stuff. Um, and also at that same mall, there was a games workshop as well. I remember that back in the day. They've moved out as well, and I think they went to I the Heartland so. Center or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, but are you guys still big into like that kind of stuff? Because I don't see too, too much of it here anymore. I'll pick it up if it comes in, uh, but I'm really choosy. Nothing sells slower than incomplete Transformers or G.I. Joes, mm-hmm. like missing their, their little bits and parts. Yeah. The stuff that your mom sucked up in the vacuum cleaner when you were a kid. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing sells slower than uh, than than you know a GI Joe vehicle missing all its missiles, whatever. So I'm really really picky about condition. The decals and stickers have to have great definition and look good. So I don't pick it up as much as I used to. Yeah. And uh, if I'm honest, GI Joe and and Transformers has slowed down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. I hear that. I I do see that that there's less presence now yeah. in stores but there's still a community when you go to a comic con or like a smaller con um and fan expo but that's really all like sure. yeah most of the time that's where i see it um for, so for right now i do still see that you have toys you still have a little bit of cards so you have the magic cards and pokemon cards and you have back issues and you have your new release wall um but one of my favorite things when i go to this store is seeing all the key issues 
that are graded oh, yeah. right there. Um, it seems like a lot of paperwork to be filling all that kind of stuff out, grading and all that kind of thing, but well, it looks really worth it, though. Um, I, I go to a lot of trouble to get stuff that people don't ever see. Yeah, like, like that. Um, I, I, so, you I know. have page four of Superman number one. That's right. Um, that's the, the the thing that I was uh, hanging over at the uh, cash register a few weeks ago, and I saw that, and I was like, why is it just one page? And uh, I remember we were on the phone one day, and you were talking about how, uh, you know, the, the insulation, the, you know, old paper being used for insulation, because mm. before there was just none. You know, um, I have still yet to hold it in my hands. I'm about to do it now. Um, but it's it's literally a page. It has a little bit of pencil marks in it. It's going for twelve fifty. Um, and I, I will show you guys a picture of it. It's absolutely amazing to hold it in my hands right now. Um, where'd you get this? I bought it off of another dealer at uh, Fan Expo. It was actually not. Yeah. I, I, no, that I, I didn't buy. It. it was part of a larger trade that involved a dozen, maybe fourteen books. And it, that went back and forth between the two of us, and this is one of the things that I I bought it because I, I thought it was cool. Yes, and, seriously, yeah, of course. And um, sometimes this occurs when you have really damaged copies of, let's say, Superman, Batman, or Action Number One, mm -hmm. and people separate them and sell them individually. A, 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 a cover um, of Superman Number One in good shape is about twenty-five to forty thousand dollars, just huh. the cover, right? So. Wow. So I liked the page. I thought it was cool. It was something I'd never had. Yeah. And um, it's a piece of history. It's like having a piece of some old, I don't know, papyrus. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, papyra? Papyri. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or like a piece of the original Bible or something. I don't know. Exactly. Um, Has oh, a lot of people asked about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, it certainly it, catches your eye because you're like, there's one, you know, kind of super old page and it's you know uh in the counter super protected with two layers of protection in it so certainly caught my eye um i'm sure i mean you've been in this business for so long Thir 31 years 31 so that's i was one <laughs> so um i'm sure that when you were a kid you were a big collector you were a big fan of comics and this is why you went here i i, I, I was when i started to when i became a dealer though um uh, i got into the business because I like the industry, mm -hmm. uh, I liked comic books, and I like people. I'm a people person. Yeah. So, um, but ultimately, I did stop collecting mm -hmm. because I found after a while I was always standing between me and my mortgage payment. Oh gosh! And yeah, of course. I'm like, okay, no, I didn't get into the business to fill a basement with product. Of course. Right. I got into it to offer the best uh, books I could. At, what I felt were reasonable prices mm -hmm. and make people happy and connect with people. Yeah. You, you know, I, I, I go down the aisles of shows and I see people mm -hmm. just sitting behind their boxes. Mm -hmm. People want to be sold on Doing something. Doing one of these, like just on their yeah, phones. Yeah, they're on yeah, their phone yeah. and there's the product, take it or leave it. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you have to sell people on it and Talk to people, people want to yeah. connect with you. They want to have fun while they're doing this. Yeah. And they can buy your book anywhere probably mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. cheaper too who knows you know yeah, yeah. there's people have varying prices on everything and i just like connecting with people at the same time and i'm selling them a comic book yeah absolutely yeah. yeah when was your do you remember like your first ever intro to a comic book oh i was probably eight years old and it was the dc series ghosts I don't even know about that one, actually. <laughs> it ran for... They had a bunch of series like this, like The Haunted Tank, uh -huh. um, House of Mystery, Ghosts, mm. and they were just each individual ghost stories, and it was kind of a throwback from the 50s horror and ghost series. Okay. And okay. after the series ended, we kind of never saw it again. Right. Um, and, I, and I certainly don't think that... Because it's because, a genre that doesn't sell as well as Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't see that kind of stuff no. being a Marvel legacy slash rebirth, you know, like, let's do, let's reboot it again kind of a genre, right? I, I, I actually see, see the, the, the top two uh, publishers, Marvel and DC, there's the least amount of character variety in the history of, yeah. of either of them. Like... You go back to Marvel, even as late as twenty years ago, there was a you know two gun kid. Like there was, they mm -hmm. had a western book, whatever. Yeah. Or they, well, let's go back twenty five years, and then they would have like um, a, a horror series, and then a monster book, and this and that. And they do this once in a while. DC uh, will issue a 
like a Halloween issue, which mm-hmm. is cool because you see Superman fighting aliens. Well, he fights aliens a lot. All the but, time. He's an but, alien. Yeah. But you'll see Batman fighting zombies or something or yeah. the werewolf or whatever. It's there just are Marvel the, zombies and then there's correct. the, uh, what do you call it? One of my favorite ones, um, the Green Lantern, uh, Black Lantern series as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, 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 oh, uh, the Necron uh, like say stuff. Darkest Night. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was pointing at the, the rings. Um, I realize sometimes when I'm on a podcast and I do like these hand gestures and people are probably like, huh? Um. <laughs> yeah, we sell, just for the people yeah, who for can't the, see yeah, it, we course. sell the, the 11 rings um, and you can look like uh, the superhero version of Liberace or something. Like yeah, a pity, a pity the fool who doesn't have willpower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that. Um, and then afterwards, of course, you started, like, I mean, in your college years, maybe were you still reading comics? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a genre that... that that I enjoy right up to to, uh, to today, mm-hmm. by because I bought and sold literally just about everything. I don't think there's there's a book I have it. I'm in negotiations to buy a All Star Eight, which is the first Wonder Woman right now as Very we nice. speak. Yeah. So and that'll probably cap everything off. Mm-hmm. Um, have I bought and sold a Batman one? No, but almost every issue since, including yeah. a two or three. Um. um um, there's still a lot of stuff I, I do enjoy. I just, you know, do I sit on a Spider-Man number one for five thousand dollars, or do I, I sell it and pay do down? You sell it, right? Pay yeah, bills and absolutely. then put the money to something else. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and in terms of like, let's say your back issues versus your new release wall. Um, you know, I, I still go to their back issues because there's still some things in my collection that I'm looking at. Sure. But, you know, a person will come in here and they're totally new to comics, but they like a particular character. Do you gravitate to showing them the back issues first or do you direct them to the new release? Well, okay, that, that, that's that's uh, a quick question with a long answer. Like, like For sure, for sure. Okay, so... <clears throat> So like I um, guess uh, back to... issue sales have never been better. Mm-hmm. It's just a good percentage uh, percentage of it is now online. Like sure, back, yeah. There's probably more people involved by buying back issues than ever before, including mm-hmm. speculators who want to buy either number ones or key issues. First appearance of Hulk, Wolverine, mm-hmm. uh, not Hulk. People love the first appearance. Sure, yeah. Correct, and and you can sell that to anyone, even non comic. I, I have a list of guys who half of them don't even collect comic books. They just want a first Wolverine. And to call them the next one that one of a certain condition comes in, let's say. But going forward, for collectors, I think people are making a huge mistake mm-hmm. in ignoring a lot of the new market. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and I think this is where people feel that new comics are overprinted. Actually, it's the contrary. Print runs have never been smaller. Yeah. In the history yeah. of comic books, we're actually at a low point. And people always ask me, you know, why is the book out last week? Now it's fifty dollars. And I said, Well it's because there's no inventory out there. Right, right. There's right. no issues. So less, yeah. That's why you gotta get on a pull list. That's much. right. Um I, I, an example of that is as little as ten years ago in Mississauga, Canada's fifth largest city, which has nine fifty a million people. Who knows? It's yeah, a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. The the sign on the highway is always wrong. Yeah. Um <laughs> we have to keep changing it every week if that's the case. Yeah. So there was probably hundreds of places as little as 10 years ago to buy comic books in Mississauga. Every variety store had a newsstand. Right, yeah, yeah. Not just yeah. the comic book shops, not just the bookstores, but think of it. Mississauga probably has 500 or more variety stores. Mm-hmm. From the edge of Etobicoke right to the beginning of Oakville, yeah, which is yeah. 40 kilometers, yeah. right? In there, and, and Mississauga is almost 40 kilometers high mm-hmm. or, or tall. Um there's a lot of variety stores. Well, none of them, almost none of them have uh, uh, newsstands anymore. That's oh, absolutely on. not. Not right? even magazines. And it's not that the comic books aren't selling. It's the comic books used to piggyback with Time, Chatelaine, McLean's, mm-hmm. Newsweek, National Geographic, like, and almost all that's gone. And unless you go into a, a Shoppers Drug Mart, and hardly any of those carry comic books anymore. No, not at all. So, you've got print runs at the lowest point in almost the history of the industry. As a matter of fact, it is the lowest point. Mm-hmm. Now, I rem- now Spider-Man, Marvel's best-selling title on an ongoing basis, actually sells the same, has the same print run as Captain America mm-hmm. 10 years ago. Marvel's worst-selling uh, A-list character at the time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, wow, that's really changed. Yeah, and you know what? There's a lot of... There's a lot of people that are interested in the, this whole industry because of the movies, you know? I mean, yeah.